Um, I've just remembered one thing I'm going to do before I do anything else, and that is to increase the size of the font here because it's, as I said at the beginning, it's quite small. Um, and not only be easier for you to read, uh, it should make it a little bit easier for me to read. So what I'm going to do is go to the sources, and as you remember, kept the sources. You'll need to keep them around while you're building BLFS because certain packages will need certain options in the um, kernel to be built to to work properly. So it is always handy. Now there is. Um, in fact, it mentions it in the BLFS book quite early on. If I could find that. Um, let's see if I can find that. Console fonts. Yeah, it's quite early on. So if I open this up, you can actually set fonts. Um, using the uh, etc sys config console configuration file this line here if you can see that it says font equals you can actually change this first bit to a different font and there are larger ones available in if I get the link up uh, let's get rid of that uh, yeah, this. Uh, no, it's not that one. Where is it? I could never remember where the location of the font. Oh, there they are. User share console fonts. So ls minus ls user share console fonts. Yeah, so there's a list of console fonts that you can use. So basically, um, the one I was using was. Like one of these let so one dash one or something and it's just the first part of that name that you need so in this case if it was that one there it would be let nine dash fourteen that's what you put in the um, in the console uh, configuration file the reason why I go to the kernel is because it's permanent basically it's in there but also it's the largest font I've been able to get working there is one here which is a similar size 24 by 32 but I don't think that has worked before when I've tried it because you'll find that some of these fonts don't always work uh, so it's a bit of trial and error um, some are fonts for different languages and so on so you have to just try them out if you know you want one like a uh, VGA size that would be 8 by 16 for example you want one slightly smaller then go for something like 8 or 9 sorry it's 9 by 16 is the VGA size uh, go for something like 8 by 8 and that really is small so depending on what, what size you want um, so there's a one there 12 by 22 which that will obviously be a little bit bigger there's another one there with it was a readme file actually um, so I might just try this one actually, Solar 24 by 32 see what it looks like, see if it works in, in fact. So Solar 24x32. So let's try putting that in. So what I'll do is I'll take a copy of that. Solar... Twenty two by thirty two, I think it was, wasn't it? Let me just check. Solar twenty two by thirty two. Twenty four by thirty two. Solar twenty four X thirty two. Twenty four X thirty two. And also the one in the uh, the kernel, the font in the kernel, I'll just reboot this so that it gets activated. Uh, there's probably a way of reactivating this console, but I'm not sure if it will set the um, font or not. Uh, I suppose I could try it. Let's do ls. Um, it'll be one of these. Oh, there's a console there. So let's try running that. Start. 
Oh yeah, oh that's way too big. Uh, that's uh and it's not that nice anyway either, so and it's locked me out. So um Yes, I don't think I will use that, that's way too big. Uh but as you can see it's quite simple to adjust it from the commands prompt. Um so I'll put this back. In fact, I'll leave this remarked out because if I leave that in there, the kernel font will get set, the one that I set, but then this setting will override that and that's obviously going to defeat the point of what I'm trying to do. So let's just have another quick look, see if there's any, any other big ones. And it could well be the case that there's more fonts to download and install in this directory. Um, if you're not happy with the ones here and you're not happy with the ones in the kernel. No, it doesn't look like there's anything else that's really particularly big. Um, I'm sure there used to be a term. Oh yes, Latin 2 term. Oh, it's term 16, so it's quite a small one, that is. Latin 2... I guess I could try that one, but it's probably going to be a small one, being as it ends in 16. That was the number of scan lines, I guess. That's, that, I'll try it if I can remember it. It says capital L A T 2 dash capital T E R Terminus 16. That 2 Terminus 16. That's 2 Terminus 16. Uh, so it was a capital L, that too. And don't worry about getting the spelling wrong because if it's wrong, it can't find it. It will just um, default to a default con um, con uh, font, a bit like looks like what's happened there. So let dash. That's two dash terminus sixteen. Now, just a lot like I've written that in, typed that in correctly. So um, maybe it is just the default sixteen pixels high font, and that's why it doesn't look any difference. So I'm going to just put this back, rem out the, remark out the current one I've got, and do what I was going to do originally, which is go to the kernel. run make menu config to get the configuration menu up the incursors menu configuration and go to uh, device drivers is it no uh, this is a bit of fun where I try to remember library routines no try to remember where it is Yes, it is this one. Yeah, that's it. It's library routines. So it's near the bottom of the main menu, library routines. And then towards the bottom of this menu is an option select compiled in fonts. Press space to select that. You can see by default a VGA 8x16 font is the one that's uh, selected by default and it's forced on because obviously the console needs a font. And the one that I like to use here is this Terminal 16x32. It does say it's not supported by all drivers, so if you quite fancy it and try it, it doesn't work, don't be surprised. This Spark one's slightly smaller, it's it's also quite nice, it's, I don't think it's quite as nice, it looks a bit like a Times Roman type font, but it's a, it's a quite a reasonable one, um, if you can't get the Terminus one to work, uh, to work. But if I select this, you can see that the VJ 8x16 disappears because we've actually selected a different font. So I'll just quit out of that, say yes to save, uh, recreate the kernel, so 
I'll just wait for this to build. It should only just build this little bit that it needs. Some options affect most of the kernel and you'll find that the kernel takes a while to build. Um, whereas this should only be quite localized. It shouldn't need to rebuild a great, a great deal. So it should be quite a fast um, compile. Okay, that's done. Now, because it's going to be rebuilding kernel, because there's a slight chance of creating a kernel that won't boot or does something that causes problems, what I'm going to do is to uh, not overwrite the existing kernel, because I know that one works, and use that as a backup in case um, something does happen. And then when I've finished all of BLFS, I can just get rid of that old kernel. Well, in fact, I could leave it as a backup anyway. Um, but, you know, the option's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy from Arch um, x86, is it? Yeah, underscore 64 boot. That's the um, kernel image. And I'm going to copy it to boot, copy it to VM Linux, but it's going to be like the second version, so I'll put a little dash two after that. And I'm also going to copy system.map, copy that to boot, same as before, but I'll put a dash two after it. And similar, similarly with the configuration file, I'm going to copy that to the boot, similar layout with a dash two on the end. So this command here will copy all the files necessary into the boot partition to boot with. Oh, why did that happen? Oh, I didn't put the ampersand in to link the commands together. Right, that's better. So now if I look at the boot directory, you can see I've got my existing one, my existing kernel dated 5th of September, and the new one date with today's date on October 19th. So the next thing I'm going to do is modify the grub file so that the new kernel is the always going to be the default one. Uh, boot grub, grub.cfg. But I'm going to leave this option here as a backup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a few lines here and just delete that. I'm going to press DD twice here to delete that line. Shift P to put it back. Move up a couple of lines just here. Shift P to paste that. Do the same for this line here. DD to delete it. Shift P to paste it back, paste it back here, and then lastly, there's just a closed curly bracket. Now, what I'll do is um, the default is zero, so that's the first entry. So I could put a little remark here uh, entry zero, the uh, default kernel. And the default one is going to be the one that I'm going to upgrade. So to remind me of that, I'm going to put a dash two in there. If I put a dash two in there, that'll um, boot the kernel that I'll be upgrading as a build LFS. And then entry number one is going to be my backup kernel. So I'll put a little note in 
the message. This is the message that appears in the menu at boot time. Now, obviously, I can't show you that because the screen is not enabled on the capture when the Mac boots. But if you do the same, you'll see yourself when you reboot. So, I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll call it fallback. Um, and I'll just have to remember that that's not going to be as fully featured. But at some point, I can copy uh, the dash 2 into the fallback and just make the fallback the default one or just keep the dash two just remove that dash two and you know you've got all sort of, sorts of options um, how you could treat this so basically at, at, as it stands at the moment it's going to be always booting the dash two so as long as I always update the dash two kernel image which is here then I'll always be getting the latest newest kernel that I as I update it each time as as and as as and when, and at any time I make a mistake or something doesn't work, then I can on the screen select the second option to boot into a known kernel that works, which is at the moment the current run, current running one. So I'll save that, and I'm going to reboot immediately to test that out, and I'll show you how I know for certain when it has rebooted that I have got the newer version booted well we'll see anyway because the console will be different uh, but because that's not always going to be the case I'll show you what happens when it has booted right the chime has just gone it's come up with a grub prompt again for some reason um, don't quite know what I did to cause that it was just a and edit in the configuration. I must have done something silly. Um, right, so let's do the same as before. HD root. Yeah, so set root equals unbreaking HD one comma GPT two. Then Linux forward slash uh, boot forward slash VM Linux and remembering to select dash two RO root equals slash dev slash SDA two and then boot and that's booting fine yeah we can see the new console so I've got to check my config file to see what I messed up in that but you can see the console font is quite a decent size uh, well it certainly is on this I think it's a 24 inch monitor 25 27 I'm not sure what size it is actually it's about that size um, in fact I think it might be 27 inch come to think of it anyway it's a reasonable size and it looks nice as well that more importantly it's something nice to look at so let's go into the boot grub grub.cfg and just have a look what have I done wrong here oh right okay I can see straight away it's it's not either I didn't type it in properly or it's not kept the or I've deleted by accident the closed curly bracket so that's why that happens so again if I do reboot now um, this time it should work correctly right so I've got the chime press enter and yes it's worked first time this time so that's better. That got me a little bit worried, but yeah, these things happen sometimes, and it's I guess knowing what to look for and knowing that I've just done changes to that file that could be the only place really. Right, so now I've got a decent sized font logged in. Um yeah, I'll show you how to find out that we've got a newer version of the kernel than previously. Um do you know minus A? You can see that the newer version of the kernel 
this number gets updated each time you build the kernel. So previously it would have been hash one and now it's hash two. And as we change the kernel more times and deploy it and boot from that deployed version, you'll see that that number go up over time. Okay, so yeah, that was just a little aside for the fonts. 